Welcome to the Tenogen Pipeline, courtesy of me, Hydroxide, and the Shadrat Draws. And we're going to hopefully get the entire process down to an uh, understandable point so you're more informed and maybe want to try it yourself. So let's start off with what is Tenogen. Tenogen is Tenno generated content, so content generated by people in our community, which are like alt helmets, skins, weapon skins, Lizette skins, and Cyandanas. And they're done via the Steam Workshop, and you can be buy, bought them in game and then help support both the game and the creator. Now, it's a little bit different for consoles. Consoles get it after they've been accepted in the Steam Workshop and for the PC player base, so it's a little bit different. But if you're interested in seeing how to actually vote and see what the workshop is, you can find it in your community tab on Steam by clicking the workshop or going into the Warframe page and find the workshop there. And you'll see that basically once you get to the workshop list, by flicking through the page, you'll eventually see that the Warframe page is there. By clicking that, then you'll be brought to the Warframe workshop. On the home page, you'll find multiple, multiple items, the ones that are accepted, the ones that are up for view, ones that your friends have liked, and most importantly, your voting queue for the list. Now on the home page, if you click the browse and click items, you'll see the most recent, the most popular ones that were just submitted, and you'll see the kind of the home page rundown of the most recent ones to date. Um, but the fault is by popularity, so who have most voted on. Um, but by clicking any of the image on the homepage, you can see more of the basically the content got to do with that skin. You see the name, the, who made it, what kind of skin it is. You'll see rendered shots, and importantly, you also see the tint masks of how it's going to be coloured. But do remember that what you see in the workshop, the kind of the renders, all, don't always match up what it looks like in game. And we'll talk about that more later when we talk about technical specifications. But you can vote on it, so you can say if you like the item, if you're not interested or you don't like the item, and it gives some metrics for DE to kind of see like if there's uh, if they're not sure about whether someone should get in or not, then they kind of look at the voting. But voting does not guarantee that an item gets into the game, so the, you do, do be careful of that. Um, but you can go through all of the items that, but it's the same kind of thing as your actual voting queue. So now we need to kind of download the Warframe Tenogen tool, which can be found under your Steam library under Tools section, and this is where everything begins for the process, where you get all your files, all your help, it's all done there, and the tool is free, so I recommend you downloading if you're interested and taking a look around. But once it launches, you'll see that there's a default viewer, which is kind of a plane and lights of how the model will be placed inside the grid. Um, and there's three things you really need to know here that you see on the top is that basically you've got the viewer, the upload function and the help function. Down below there's stuff to actually get the models into the game but we're not going to be looking at that just yet. What we really really want to start now off is by clicking the help function and this is where all the information for making Warframes are. And this is stuff you have to adhere to if you're making the things. It's good to also read this before you start to get an idea of what the kind of style and limitations are so you won't kind of get um, hit by the boss later. Um, so the main things that you'll see here that we have art style guides of kind of what is Tenno, what is Grenier, what is Corpus, what is Infested. Very important for the stylistic changes you want to make for your skin. We also have like basic art guide. The most popular thing that you need to really know to get things ready is like, okay, how do I start sculpting? The content files and examples tab has every single thing that you need. So if you're looking at what uh, skins are, you make an alt helmet by yourself, but the body of the Warframe has to be basically the one that they have in game. It's the low poly they give you. Um, in the basic art guide, they tell you more about kind of what is it surprised of what you'll um, be submitting. So like, you know, your maps, um, what's your triangle limits for your helmets, which you need to adhere to. Um, kind of the main guys are sectioning off like the, you know, the, the details. So what's kind of big sections, small sections, and then finer details, the flow, the rule of thirds, all this kind of stuff is really used for the Tenno style of, of, of uh, sculpting. Um, very sleek, very minimal, um, but there it's it's kind of more of a, a rough guide of how the style should be treated. Um, but in the content files and examples tab, you'll see every single Warframe, every single thing that can be done. Um, obviously, if there's a new Warframe, then those files do get added there. But this list is basically a kind of a, 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 a huge list of zip files for the low poly of both the body and the helmet that's currently using games. All the textures that are also in there, and then we also have a zip file for basically what is the shoulders for the Cyandanas if you want to make a Cyandana. So when you download these, you will get that zip. I usually kind of download them all, put them into a Tenogen folder in my documents, and then you'll have everything there for your own projects. But once you download it and, uh, and abstract it, you basically get your textures, your PNGs, the FBX file, and the OBJ. We'll be going to those more l later, kind of how they're used um, when you're starting your sculpting. But if you download those and import it into the viewer, you'll actually be able to see what it looks like in-game with every single layer of uh, 
geometry or roughness normal stuff onto it so you can actually go to it import the obj file like i'm doing here right now with atlas you see that just by clicking the one that i downloaded import it it's then placed in the, the viewer this is what basically atlas is in game he's a low poly model by clicking underneath the obj you'll see that there is material there it's usually called default there's multiple different things for materials underneath here now, if you go into the in-game and the source textures, there's things that are basically uh, with suffixes D, E, N, or S. These are basically your diffuse map, your emissive map, your normal map, your roughness map, your specular map, and then your tint mask. So, each of these can be brought and kind of imported into the material list that you see on the right side. And they will each add a layer of detail to the actual model. And this is how the models are in-game. It's a very low poly model, but with each of these stuff, such as the fuse, normal, roughness maps, you see that the detail starts looking a bit more high quality um, as you do on. So when you see that you want to add a normal map, you look for the tint mask that has the suffix underscore n, the roughness is underscore r, specular is underscore s, and so on and so forth. And you can just play around seeing how each of the detail lies up, getting familiar about what these maps do and how they look. Um, and the most important one in uh, for fashion frame is the tint mask. So the tint mask is basically what's your primary color, what's your secondary color, tertiary color, and accent color, and then your emissive map is your energy. So as soon as you import your tint mask and you can play with the four dots changing the colors, you will see how the actual colors are mapped on your frame. And that's also important later on when you're doing your own tint mask, but you can kind of get a feel for how these stuff are uh, laid out. So um, accent is usually your, your metal color, which works in terms of kind of your specular map and your roughness map. Um, and your emissive map is just the energy. So you want to start kind of getting ideas for your Tenogen uh, um, sculpting or model or skin or helmet. Um, I use two things, but there's different ones. Um, I recommend Pure Ref, which is a free tool. You can just add images and make an artboard, as you can see from my Mirage one here. Um, Pinterest is also what I use as well. It's very good. I will have links to these down below as well. And it's good to just start getting your ideas, exploring the theme of the Warframe and what could possibly go there, and just kind of get your reference list ready for when you want to start um, bringing it down to kind of silhouettes and designs. So to summarize this video so far, you can download the Tenogen tool from your library under Tools, the Warframe Tenogen tool, open up that program, look at the help function, read all the actual guides that give you an art, your, your triangle limits, get a rough idea of how it's done, inform yourself kind of what, what is to be done, P download some of the content file and examples and put it into the viewer and exp you know, kind of see, can you get used to putting in the maps for the materials, diffuse layers, all this kind of stuff. And then also look at research for what theme it may be for, for Zephyr, it could be different types of birds. Go to Pinterest, Pure Ref, Real World, draw them if you're a really good artist and collect your ideas together so you've got a bit of more of a kind of a, a visual library of stuff that you may want to explore. And now we'll go on to some Q&A um, that I've done with DE to ask him kind of um, some more technical questions. And now we have some questions that were given to the Tenogen team at DE, and uh, here are their answers. So the first question I asked them was, how do you go around collecting references for your designs? Do you use any tools to keep them together? And they basically said, uh, Google and lots of images and stuff that's in the game, just monitors full of images, nothing complicated. So similar like what we were talking before, Pinterest, Pure Ref, just build up a visual library of stuff, both in-game to see the current design styles and stuff you find online to kind of inspire your, your interests. Now the next question I asked was, when you start trying to concept your idea, do you start with silhouette and features or details? And Kaz said, silhouette is king. When starting, you should always check out the basic art guide to make sure you're on the right track statistically, which can be found in the Tenogen guide in the tool. And Skyers said, the order you have those three elements organized in the question is the best way to approach a design, which is silhouette, then features, then details. You want to start with the larger forms and then break up the large form, especially for Warframe into thirds. Then take those forms and so do the same thing if necessary. I would also consider adding exploring themes to the front of that process. Having a theme will help inspire silhouettes and shapes that express that theme. 
So the next question I asked him was, what are the instant no's that omit a submission from being accepted? And they basically say that's all outlined in the guide of the Tenogen Workshop, which is basically no copywritten ideas, which are like IPs from other games or stuff. The art style, that basically if it breaks the art style, if it's too modern or too uh, contemporary or pop reference. Also, technical limitations are a big one. Many, basically, polygon counts are too high for submission, um, or if there's obscenity, or if it's too close to existing content. Now the next question is, do you think feedback at an early stage is helpful for ideas? And they said basically, feedback is definitely always helpful, even if it's just from another set of eyes from a friend. Always take it with a grain of salt though. Remember that any person or group of people will have their own biases and it's up to you to parse that along with your own artistic goals and the Warframe aesthetic. So keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> Uh, so the next question was, how crucial is the existing theme of the Warframe for creating a skin? Does it need to fit the theme or could it just fit the shapes provided by the Warframe? And uh, they basically said, fitting the actual theme of the Warframe is strongly preferred, but not a hard rule. It really helps make the design feel customized to that character and their powers. The next question was, any piece of equipment or software you could, would recommend for beginners in modeling or designing? And uh, Start with the free man's route unless you already know how to make a good art and are confident you'll get your money's worth out of the investment. This tool is less important than the doing and we'll have a list of links and references to a lot of these tools that people use down below um, for you to look at. And I asked, do you use pen, paper and Photoshop when coming up with ideas? And how much time would you estimate a person should spend learning before attempting a piece? And Kaz said, different strokes for different folks. Um, sick, ass <laughs> sick ass art pun in brackets. So now this one is a bit of a kind of like a where should you begin question. So um, I asked, should you learn sculpting first, then design, or design first, then learn sculpting? And Kaz said, it's hard to say which one you should learn first. They're both very important and feed off each other. Just make sure not to neglect one over the other as you learn. And Skyers said, it's important to have a good understanding of art principles and elements in general, especially for Warframe as the assets that are made for the game aren't found in the real world and require artistic input to fill in the various blanks. Having this understanding will help you if you're creating a design for yourself or if you're working with someone else's design and just focusing on the creation of the 3D asset. And now this question I asked kind of the, a bit because it's a, a thing that usually comes up in streams and stuff. Um, as I asked, is any major things that you've come across that people believe about the 10 gen process? And Taylor, uh, said, I personally noticed some misconceptions relating to how many pieces are accepted per round. As round 11 showed, we'll accept any creation that meets the program requirements. If something didn't make it in, it's due to the quality or the stylistic issues. It can be hard to gauge how a skin or helmet will perform in game when looking at a screenshot in the workshop, but any flaws or problems make themselves apparent when we put them in the engine. And then sometimes these fixes required to these problems can be made quickly, resulting in the piece being accepted. Sometimes it requires a little more time at which point it needs to be updated and reviewed in the next round. So basically, if you see something in the, the workshop that you love and you're wondering why it didn't get in, more than likely it's technical or artistic styling that didn't uh, allow it to get in. Okay, now, and a question for in the future um, is basically things to keep in mind such as emissives, which is your energy in your Warframe, transparency and moving parts such as Nidus' uh, infestation. And uh, they said, emissive issues come up a lot, actually. While one may be tempted to sprinkle in as many emissives as they can, we actually recommend creators that use them extremely sparingly. They should be highlighting the focal points of the existing design, not use as focal points themselves. And also, rigging for moving parts is done with the bone and joint animation, no blend shapes. Our internal rigging team does the actual rigging. Creators just need to make sure it works and provide a visual explanation of how it should move. Now this one is kind of more of a general question in terms of the Tenogen uh, uh, acceptance process. I asked how often is the selection process and what does that entail? And Taylor said, as often as we can manage depending on our development schedule, we post an announcement on the forums and on Steam with the deadline for the next round selection. Once that date comes, we meet as a team and review all the pieces that were submitted or updated since the previous round deadline. Once we have reviewed the pieces and selected the ones that A, match the program guidelines, and B, seem original and interesting, we download all of the potential accepted creators and check them out in-game. While a skin or Sidana might look great in a render or a screenshot of the workshop, we can truly judge its quality and workmanship in our engine. At this point, we decide what pieces don't meet the technical requirements to be accepted this round, which ones are almost perfect but need some final tweaks to meet our internal standards, and which ones are ready to ship as is. The creators whose pieces need tweaks are contacted privately by us and given us a little extra time to make those changes. This timeline varies depending on a lot of factors. Once that deadline has passed, we do one last review pass on all the final versions the potential creators have made and decide which ones are ready to be accepted. 
once we have a list of the accepted pieces, we announce it publicly, then send the creations onto our team to have them rigged, given FX, and tested. In between rounds, we have a feedback wave that goes out to certain creations that needed technical or stylistic changes to help them get in the right spot for the next round. Many of the pieces we test out, but don't get accepted for technical reasons, get feedback from us, but there are others as well. And that's all the questions, guys, for this uh, for this video that I asked to eat. So we'll have some more next round of more sculpting and stuff. Um, but hopefully that fills in the, some of the blanks you may have of what Tenogen is or how it's done. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. Any questions down below, I will try to answer them. And I will see you next time for when we get into the beginning of your sculpting for Warframe Tenogen.